The Picts were the ancient people of Scotland, depicted by history as fearsome, painted warriors feared even by the Romans. Now, a new analysis shows that the six-ton iconic altar stone at the heart of Stonehenge originated from northeastern Scotland rather than southwest Wales. The Picts were the ancient people of Scotland. Traditionally portrayed as painted, terrifying warriors who even the Romans feared, but who were they really? Were they savage outsiders from Eastern Europe, as Roman writers claimed? Or were they Scotland's original inhabitants, a lost civilization misunderstood for centuries? For the first time, we finally have the answer, and it comes directly from their DNA. A groundbreaking new study has cracked the Pictish genome. What the scientists found doesn't just rewrite history, it reveals a brand new puzzle that seems to defy all logic. Today, we're going to show you exactly what this new science uncovers about the Pict's true and baffling origins. Before DNA, the Picts were Scotland's greatest historical riddle. For more than a thousand years, these people were a mystery. They weren't just random tribes scattered across the wilderness. They were the original rulers of the North, a powerful and organized civilization that controlled the lands above modern-day England. They built fortresses, ruled kingdoms, and were so militarily effective that they stopped the most powerful empire in human history, the Roman Empire. The Romans themselves gave them their name. In 297 AD, a Roman writer first used the term Picti, meaning the painted ones, a title born out of fear and awe. Soldiers stationed on Hadrian's Wall and later the Antonine Wall told stories of the fierce warriors from Caledonia, men who rushed into battle with their bodies covered in swirling blue designs a sight so fearsome that even the disciplined Roman legions hesitated. For centuries, the Picts became the ultimate other, barbaric shadows at the edge of the world. Rome conquered the deserts of Syria and the forests of Germania, but they could not conquer northern Scotland. The Romans built Hadrian's Wall, an enormous 73-mile-long shield, just to keep the northern tribes out. Even when they tried again with the Antonine Wall further north, they couldn't hold it. The Picts and their neighbors were relentless. To Rome, this was the absolute edge of civilization. But history has a way of surprising us. When the Romans finally abandoned Britain in the early 4th century, the Picts didn't fade away. They flourished. They rose to dominate huge areas of northern and eastern Scotland, building a kingdom that would shape the early medieval world. And they left behind one of archaeology's most enduring mysteries, their stones. Across Scotland, on windswept islands, rolling hills and moss-covered plains, the Picts carved hundreds of massive symbol stones, about 350 survive, covered in a symbolic language nobody has ever been able to decipher. Animals, eagles, stags, wolves, salmon. Objects like combs and mirrors, possibly symbols of status or female authority. And the strange abstract designs, the crescent and V-rod, the double disc and Z-rod, the notched rectangle. And of course, the most iconic of all, the Pictish Beast, a strange elephant-like creature that seems to swim across the stone. Some say it resembles a seahorse. Others think it may be an early depiction of the Loch Ness Monster. But what does it mean? A written language? Royal heraldry? Religious symbols? No one knows. By the 9th century, the Picts seemed to vanish from the historical record. Their language disappeared. Their symbols stopped being carved. Their identity merged into the kingdom that would one day be called Scotland. And because they left no written history, the legends multiplied. Where did they come from? Medieval scholars offered dramatic theories. The most famous came from the scholar Bede, 
who wrote in the 7th century that the Picts were invaders from a land near the Black Sea. Others claimed they came from Thrace. Some believed they were castaways from mysterious northern islands. These exotic theories became popular for centuries. They offered romance, a story of painted strangers arriving on Scottish shores with strange customs and an unknown tongue. For generations, this was accepted history. The Picts were outsiders. But was any of that true? Until now, no one knew. All we had were the stones, the legends, and speculation. That changed when scientists turned to the one thing that cannot lie. DNA. They weren't prepared for what they found. The plan was simple. Use cutting-edge genetics to trace the origins of the Picts. But they first needed remains, bones capable of surviving 2,000 years of acid Scottish soil. That alone was nearly impossible. Ancient Pictish skeletons are incredibly rare. Many Picts were buried in ways that left little trace. But an international team led by researchers from Liverpool John Moores University and the University of Aberdeen decided to try. They focused on two Pictish cemeteries, London Lynx in the south and Balintor in the north. Both were coastal, both significant, and both offered the best chance at preserved remains. Working in sterile clean rooms, scientists drilled tiny amounts of bone powder from the densest bones, often from the inner ear. They extracted ancient DNA from eight individuals, seven from London Lynx and one from Balintor. In ancient genetics, eight samples from this era is a major breakthrough. Better yet, two were complete, high-quality genomes. For the first time, we had the biological blueprint of the Picts, their unbroken genetic toad. The team compared the Pictish DNA to more than 8,300 ancient and modern genomes across Europe. If the legends were true, the Picts would match populations near the Black Sea or the Balkans. The results were undeniable. Every single exotic origin theory was wrong. There was zero genetic link to Eastern Europe, no connection to Thrace, no evidence of far-traveling invaders. The truth was far more powerful. The Picts were not outsiders. They were local, deeply local. Their DNA matched the Iron Age populations who lived in Britain long before the Romans arrived. They were the indigenous people of northern Scotland a direct continuation of the ancient inhabitants of the land. Their kingdoms, their art, their traditions, everything was homegrown. But when scientists looked closer, they found something even stranger, a discovery that made no sense at all. If the Picts were native to the east and north of Scotland, then modern people in those areas should be their closest living relatives. But the DNA said the opposite. The closest living relatives of the Picts are people in Western Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland, and Northumbria, not the East, not the North, not the Pictish heartland. How could that be? The answer lay in what happened after the Picts' time. The East of Scotland was flooded with new genetic waves, Anglo-Saxons pushing north from continental Europe, and Vikings sweeping in from Norway, colonizing the North and East. These groups mixed heavily with Eastern Scots, diluting the original Pictish DNA. But the West, isolated by mountains and distance, remained genetically ancient. The people there preserved the older British genetic pattern that used to cover all of Scotland. So the Picts didn't travel West. The West simply stayed the same while the East changed. This discovery rewired the entire genetic map of Britain. But the DNA had one more revelation. It toppled one of the oldest and strangest theories about the Picts, the idea that they inherited kingship through the female line. Bede claimed the Picts were matrilineal, that they chose kings through royal women. This became a famous theory, reinforced by confusing medieval king lists. But the DNA proved otherwise. At London Links, scientists tested mtDNA, mother's line DNA 
from seven individuals. If the Picts followed matrilineal inheritance, these people should share maternal lineages. They didn't. Every single person had a different maternal line. This was a bombshell. It meant women were not staying in their birth communities. They were marrying into new groups, classic female exogamy. The Picts were not matrilineal. That theory was just a misunderstanding, likely caused by political marriages between Pictish kings and foreign princesses. The DNA now proved. The Picts are indigenous. Their genetic legacy survives in the West. They did not use a matrilineal system. But one last question remained. The greatest mystery of all. What happened to the Picts? Around the 9th century, the chronicles fall silent. Their language disappears. Their symbols vanish. Their identity dissolves into something new, the Scots. The traditional story blames Kenneth MacAlpin, king of the Gaels of Dal Riata. Around 843 AD, he became king of both Gaels and Picts, uniting the kingdoms into Alba, the foundation of modern Scotland. Some say he conquered the Picts in a brutal coup, even using a legendary trap known as the Treason of Scone. According to the tale, he invited Pictish nobles to a feast, collapsed the benches, and slaughtered them all. But historians now believe this story was propaganda written centuries later. And the DNA proves it cannot be true. There was no mass replacement, no genocide, no genetic break. The Gales and Picts were already closely related, genetically almost identical descendants of the same ancient British population. They didn't replace each other, they merged. It was not a disappearance, it was a rebranding, a political and cultural shift in which the Gaelic language became dominant, especially through the influence of the prestigious Gaelic church on Iona. Within a few generations, people who were fully Pictish by blood simply began calling themselves Scots. They didn't vanish. They became Scotland. The Pictish language faded. The Gaelic court rose. But the people remained. And the DNA, quiet, stubborn, unchanging, reveals the truth. The Picts are still here. They never left. Their descendants live today across Wales, Northern Ireland, Western Scotland, and Northern England. The Picts were never strangers. They were the ancient Britons, the bedrock of the North, the original Scots. And their story, once clouded by myth, has finally been restored by the only witness who never forgets, the human genome. Implications of the Scottish Picts' DNA Discovery the moment scientists sequenced the DNA of the Scottish Picts, one of Europe's most shadowy ancient peoples, everything we thought we knew about early Britain began to shift. For centuries, historians have argued over who the Picts truly were, mysterious warriors painted in blue, a vanished tribe, or simply a misunderstood branch of Celtic Britain. But now, with the decoding of their genetic blueprint, a far more astonishing story has emerged, and its implications stretch far beyond archaeology. They reach into identity, migration, politics, and the very mythology of Scotland itself. First, this discovery rewrites the early middle-aged map of Britain. For generations, the Picts were believed to be a strange anomaly a tribe so culturally and linguistically unique that they were considered almost alien compared to neighboring Britons, Gaels, and Anglo-Saxons. But their DNA reveals something far more grounded. The Picts were not outsiders at all. Instead, they were genetically continuous with the earlier Iron Age peoples of northern Scotland. This means their culture did not appear suddenly or mysteriously, it evolved steadily over thousands of years. Scotland now has genetic proof of a deep-rooted ancient population whose lineage survived conquests, invasions, and cultural upheavals while maintaining their genetic continuity. Second, it challenges the myth that the Picts mysteriously disappeared. 
For centuries, their sudden vanishing from written history around the 10th century fueled countless theories, extinction, assimilation, disease, or even migration. But DNA analysis shows something entirely different. The Pictish genetic signature persists strongly in modern Scots, especially in the Northeast. The Picts did not vanish at all. They became the backbone of Scotland. Their culture may have merged into the emerging kingdom of Alba, but their bloodline continued unbroken. This discovery reframes Scottish identity, grounding it in a lineage far older and more resilient than anyone realized. Third, the findings force historians to rethink the Picts' reputation as mysterious or primitive. The Picts carved intricate stone monuments, built complex fortifications, and maintained a sophisticated society. Their DNA shows a level of population stability that contradicts old stereotypes of tribal chaos or barbarism. If anything, the Picts were one of the most enduring ethnic groups in early medieval Europe. Surviving Roman aggression, Norse raids, and political transformation while maintaining their genetic continuity. Fourth, the DNA challenges long-held theories about migration and ancestry in Britain. Some historians believe the Picts were a remnant of a pre-Celtic people, while others argued for Scandinavian or Iberian origins. But genetic sequencing shows no dramatic foreign influx. Instead, the Picts appear strongly local, suggesting that northern Scotland was far less influenced by continental migrations than southern Britain. This means the waves of change, Anglo-Saxon settlement, Viking expansion, Roman occupation, had far less genetic impact on the far north than previously assumed. In other words, Scotland's ancient populations were remarkably resistant to outside replacement. Fifth, this has deep implications for understanding Celtic languages and culture. If the Picts were genetically continuous with earlier Celtic-speaking peoples, then the idea that they spoke a non-Indo-European language becomes unlikely. The DNA suggests cultural continuity, not disruption. This means the Pictish language was probably Celtic, not an isolated relic, helping linguists reconstruct the missing branches of Scotland's early speech. Finally, the implications stretch into modern-day cultural and political identity. For Scotland, a nation where heritage, autonomy, and ancient history remain emotionally charged topics, this discovery provides scientific grounding for a unique, indigenous lineage extending back millennia. The Picts were not a lost civilization. They were the foundation stones of the Scottish nation. Their legacy is alive in the DNA of the people, in the land, and in the cultural memory woven through Scottish folklore. In short, the sequencing of Pictish DNA does more than solve a mystery. It restores an entire people to history, proving that the so-called painted ones never vanished at all. Their story was simply waiting for science to give it a voice.